Good morning. In 1995, I found myself in a 27-foot long boat with 14 eighth graders, a few adults, including my sister Judy. And our job that day was to begin a five-day rowing expedition through the San Juan Islands. And uh, we got a little bit of instruction. We were all psyched. We're sitting five a row. We each have our long oar. We get ready to go, and we find ourselves going only <laughs> in circles. We had no motor, only the tall oars that they provided us, and we knew we had an issue. What followed for the next 45 minutes was one of the most powerful learning experiences that I've ever had. I was the teacher that day, but in reality, I was right there in the boat with the rest of them having to get some forward motion going on. Thankfully, one of the students in the boat, quiet guy, didn't do very well in school, said, hey, let me tell you how to do this. He got that, he got that spatial reasoning thing way better than I did. And with little instruction, we were on our way and had a pretty amazing experience together. But the lessons from that day have never left me. In fact, that experience beautifully represents some of my core beliefs about what powerful teaching and learning is all about. I want to begin by inviting each of you to take a few moments and think about one of your powerful learning experiences. It didn't have to happen in the formal classroom. It could have been when your grandpa tried to teach you to drive a tractor, or maybe it was the first time you tried to ice skate. And think for a minute, who was there? What feelings did you have? What was the setting that you were in? Now hold on to that. We're going to revisit that a little bit later. Before I talk any further about powerful teaching and learning, I want to talk about teachers for a minute. I love and respect teachers. Most teachers work tirelessly on behalf of their students when they have many, many obstacles put in front of them. The frustration and sadness that I sometimes feel about our education system today isn't about teachers. It's about some of the choices that have been made in national education. One of my roles today is the teacher success coordinator at Western Governors University, and I work with hundreds of new teachers every year. I am continually amazed that these committed, passionate people continue to respond to the call of teaching, even with the many, many challenges. I think that we've taken some wrong turns and we left far too many kids behind. And I believe that we have to advocate for bringing back to the forefront some of the things that we know and that teachers know about how we really teach in a powerful and meaningful way. So what should we be advocating for? Based on my work with literally thousands of young people over the last 20 years, I want to show what I believe are five of the key elements that are at the heart of teaching and learning. I want to also say I didn't just make these up. These are based not only on my own experience, but in many, many brain-based brain research studies that have happened for many years. The other thing I love about these elements is they don't only apply in the classroom. So I want you to think about these today, not only in that formal learning setting, but in our own lives, in, every, in everyday life. I want to begin by talking about relationship, because really isn't that what it's all about? Um, that ability to feel safe, cared for, supported. Building these kind of relationships is especially critical for kids who suffer and, and struggle in school, who don't feel like they have what it takes or that they belong. Most of what I know, many of you will recognize a few people on this slide, most of what I know about this true heart of teaching and learning comes from Greg Willis. He was my principal at Langley Middle School when I was a teacher there. And he so deeply understood that need to belong, to create that kind of safe and accept, ex, uh, accepting place for kids. Greg was not afraid to use the L word in school. In fact, he used it all the time. I always felt it was a radical act when Greg would stand on that stage at eighth grade graduation and tell those kids, we love you. And they knew that we did. The second element I want to talk about is personal relevance and meaning. Have you ever tried to learn something that you really just didn't care about one little bit? <laughs> that wasn't easy, I'll bet. I, I, I know how that is. I want to talk about a program that I really think hits at the heart of having that sense of personal connection and meaning and relevance. 
And that's Island Coffee House and Books, today known as South Woodby Commons. And this program really represents what can happen when you bring relevance and personal meaning to a learning experience. In 2005, I was a teacher at Langley Middle School, and I constantly had kids coming up to me saying, you know, I want to get a job, but every time I try to get a job, they tell me, you have to have experience to get a job. So how are we supposed to get experience when nobody will give us a job? We started having conversations with many people, and before you knew it, Island Coffee House was born. It was incredible for all of us to watch these kids, some as young as 14 years old, immediately go out and pass county health tests, learn to operate, operate these very complicated cash registers, espresso machines, and work with the toughest customer base known to man, the coffee drinker. <laughs> they developed a sense of responsibility far beyond what people believed that they could do. One of my favorite stories, one of our volunteers was, he had some unexpected surgery, a kid about 14, 15 years old, and his mom called me and told me as we, they were wheeling him into the operating room, he yells back over his shoulder, Mom, you've got to call Shauna. I've got a shift tomorrow at the coffee house. You've got to let her know I'm not going to be able to make it. And, and his mom couldn't believe that he had that level of responsibility, that that's what he was worried about as he was going off into, a, going into surgery. The human connection at the coffee house and commons between young and old, customer and server, performer and, ar and audience, they're just as critical to that sense of personal relevance and meaning. It's that L word again. Third, we need appropriate challenge. We learn best when the task set before us is just a wee bit beyond our comfort zone. When we have to stretch ourselves and extend ourselves beyond what feels safe to us. It's that slightly uncomfortable feeling when your heart beats a little bit faster and you know you're not bored. Chris Burt founded the Langley Middle School Adventure Education Program in 1992, and I was blessed to join those historically focused expeditions a year later. My participation in those journeys changed me. Um, they changed my beliefs about education, and they changed my, my life in many ways. I grew as a person um, in ways that continue to impact me today. On those journeys, we were all crew, not passengers, and those experiences leveled the playing field, removing us from that predictability of the classroom and forcing us to stretch ourselves in many ways. I always remember one trip, we were on the sailboat, and I saw a group of students kind of gathered around. I walked over and I noticed immediately it was all the 4.0 kids, you know, the really um, successful kids. And they were gathered around this young man who was not a 4.0 student, at all, and he was teaching them how to tie these really complicated sailing knots. And they were having a really hard time. And it, it struck me that this guy finally gets a chance to show what he knows, that he gets to be successful. And, and those kids so rarely get that opportunity in the traditional classroom. With teachers serving as guides on the sides, students on these expeditions were challenged to put math to work, to plot our course. They determined time and distance to our destination. They planned and implemented every aspect of that journey, from creating the menus and shopping for the trip to developing the route with the captain. This is what learning should look like, fun, empowering, and meaningful. Fourth, learning must extend beyond the walls of the classroom. Did you know that the average American teenager can recognize over a th thousand corporate logos and less than 10 native species from their own community? True fact. We have to provide ways for our kids to get out and be in the real world in meaningful ways. I also believe that we desperately need young people actively engaged in the life of our communities. They have passion and skills and strengths that we need. We need out in the real world and, and want to provide those opportunities to, to bring them and for us to go into the schools. Whether it's serving as a volunteer, hosting student interns, or many ways that each of us can help break down those walls of the schools, bringing the community into the school and the schools into the community. Another powerful example I'd love to share with you is the Spartina project that we engaged in. I don't know how many of you know what Spartina is, but it was a very um, big issue here in Island County a few years back. It's an invasive, invasive aquatic species that can really impact habitat. And we were doing a unit on invasive species, and we called our noxious weed coordinator, Judy Feldman, the wonderful Judy Feldman. And she came down, started working with my kids. Next thing you knew, we wrote a grant, got $40,000 for
for my students to serve as community educators around this issue of Spartina. They used complicated GPS technology to map Spartina beds in Island County. They partnered with the county on surveys to homeowners. They did removal projects. They um, worked with real scientists in the classroom and in the field. And at the end of that project, they were invited to Olympia to present their findings to state legislature and um, Department of Agriculture. And I want you to keep in mind, these were seventh graders, 13-year-olds. Kids are so capable when they're given those opportunities. The Good Ship Indigo was our floating classroom for a number of years. We provided about 4,000 students and teachers from across Puget Sound the opportunity to build a relationship with Puget Sound aboard her. Um, we work with real scientists engaged in real data collection projects, and students had that opportunity to contribute real data. I cannot tell you how many kids came up to me, thousands of kids, and said, I never knew science could be so cool. Music to my ears. Uh, nature is another way that we're so disconnected with all the technology today. Too many kids just don't have that opportunity to be out and experience nature and for schools to really help focus on that place-based experience. And last, but certainly not least, is service. We need to provide the opportunity for our young people to serve. They need that chance to practice what it means to be a citizen to be a contributing member of the community. I can't tell you how many teenagers have said to me, I don't even know what teenagers are for. Nobody really seems to want us around, you know? Um, so to provide them that opportunity to contribute and give back. Whether it was plan planning the senior citizen prom, clearing trails, um, the youth and philanthropy class, I saw kids shine in ways that I never saw when they provided, when they got to engage in those service programs. So, as I come to a close, I'd like to ask you to revisit the powerful learning experience that you thought about at the beginning of my talk. And I want to ask you to think about were any of these elements there? Were they present? I'm guessing they were. And next, I'd like to ask you to think about how present are they in your life today? I've been reflecting going through this process on the presence of these elements in my life and asking myself, am I being challenged? Am I serving? Am I finding personal relevance and meaning? And the answer is, is no, not as much as I should be. And, and, I, and I need to remember that keeping those elements alive is the way for me to live my life in joy and service and contri continuing to grow. So today I still have many irons in the fire, part-time farmer, college educator, Mom, sister, wife, oh yeah, don't want to forget that one, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Yet I'm trying to always be open to what's next, what I'm being called to next in my life. And I want to thank each of you for your time today. I hope that you find ways to integrate these elements into your life every day. Thank you. Thank you.